Hello, everyone. Everyone can hear me, even in the back. Nice. Thanks for joining in our session. I am really thrilled to be here. And I'm Francesco Grimaldi, um, team leader uh, at Desotec, Italian company like, like me. And um, today we are here uh, to talking about service via BGP with Calico and uh, Metal B. Um, I'm a team leader at Desotec. I'm not only uh, manage my exceptional team, but I, um, with my team, we provide consultancy and trading about cloud native technology. And today we are here with my colleague Evangelista. And uh, today we are here to shed light on how, how, how to use BGP to expose our application in Kubernetes using uh, Calico and Metal LB. And uh, as last thing about my intro introduction, I'm honored to be an authorized instructor for the Linux Foundation. This given to me the opportunity to share my knowledge and to uh, train the students. Hello everyone. I'm here with the same session, obviously. I'm Angelis Tatragni. I'm uh, also a manager for AI team in Desotec, and we work as an authorized trainer for different company, big company. For example, I'm an authorized trainer for AWS, AWS Cloud, and then uh, Linux Foundation, and, and VMware. So this is what we do on the day-to-day. -day. Like we said, we will start now, okay? It will uh, appear a little bit difficult with the next slide, but let's explain it going, uh, going over. Come on, enjoy. Let's take a look about the out outline for today. And let's uh, take a look about this slide. Can appear, may can appear complex, but today we are here to break it down and step by step to reach the final outcome. Before to deep dive in, in our setup, in our solution, uh, just take a quick review about our cluster Kubernetes that will host our solution. We have a Kubernetes vanilla cluster at version 1.27.6, and we have a cluster comprising total of six nodes, three control plane and three worker nodes. We bootstrapped this cluster. So we bootstrapped this cluster using uh, KubeADM that simplify the management and installation process. And the nodes are virtual machines Okay, running in Ubuntu Linux as guest operating system. We use a container D as a container runtime, and we opted for Calico as CNI. Uh, take care about the worker IP nodes because will become important in the next slide. Uh, what about service load balancer on Kubernetes vanilla cluster. Unlike managed solution provided by cloud provided, in Kubernetes vanilla, we don't have, Kubernetes vanilla don't support service load balancer out of the box. So this means that we need an extra component, extra configuration that will enable us to, to enable this kind of feature and to use a service load balancer. And here, tools like KubeVip or Metal LB comes into play. Service load balancer allow to expose our application outside of your cluster. And probably is better than classic node port because uh, 
if you use a simple classic node port, you probably, in a production environment, you need an external load balancer. And an external load balancer means more operational overhead. Like tools like kubevip or metal lb can work in two different manner, can work in layer two mode or in BGP mode. So what's about the layer two mode? Let's try to... The, 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 the cluster is a Kubernetes vanilla cluster in a bare metal, okay. So? No, it's, it's, it's on premises. Uh, the, the cluster run on a vSphere environment, and uh, like the nodes are virtual machines running a Linux uh, uh, Ubuntu as a guest operating system. And uh, what about layer two mode? Um, what are the benefits? How works the layer two mode? Uh, yeah, it's easy to install, okay? It's uh, no complex config, it's a pretty universal solution. Uh, we don't need uh, special network devices, uh, no fancy router. Uh, it's rapid to implement, rapid or uh, fast to implement. Uh, what about the, the drawbacks of layer two mode? Uh, in the networks, some networks, some environments uh, can be uh, GARP or style. GARP stands for gratuitous harp, that is the protocol the layer two mode used to orchestrate the failover. Which failover? When we work in layer two mode, for example, if we install Metal LB in our Kubernetes Vanilla cluster, uh, we'll install um, a system pods called speakers, and among these speakers will be elected one node as a leader, and the leader node as a speaker the speaker leader, okay, uh, have the, the main rule, the ability to intercept the external incoming traffic, okay, and route to internal traffic. Uh, imagine that uh, the speaker leader node have uh, multiple IP configure on its own interface announced to external. And, um, you have to know that when you work in layer two mode, there is a big drawback that we don't have a real load balancing. Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, you have a one speaker elected as leader that is the only node that can intercept the incoming traffic. So this means node bottleneck. Node bottleneck means that all the traffic pass through these nodes. And for example, the bandwidth is limited to node capability in that moment. But surely, if the leader nodes go down or maybe become unavailable, okay, there is a mechanism to fail over and to elect a new leader that will manage the traffic, the incoming traffic. And uh, other problem that can we meet on layer two mode, any other drawbacks can be, for example, uh, uh, problems with up updating ARP cache about uh, the underlying network devices, okay? Uh, because the speaker that use gratuitous ARP to, ha to um, update ARP cache of the network uh, neighbor to update the cache and so to make the failover, to work the failover. And uh, another problem that can we have, maybe uh, we, we work in the, in the network with some latency, one network bottlenecks, and so we can have uh, uh, problems due during leader election, and problems during leader election means possible downtime, because remember, if you don't have a leader, speaker leader working, your application are not reachable. So the question now can be BGP is the right way? Let's find out. 
And this is a, just a quick recap that where we are now. As you can see, we are a Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes vanilla cluster, three control plane node, three worker nodes. Okay, and we can proceed to the next step. Calico. As I mentioned it before, we use Calico as CNI. Calico is probably the, the one of the most famous uh, CNI in the cloud native world. Okay, it's uh, pretty adapted. And Calico uh, is a pretty modular, can be configured in multiple ways, can leverage can leverage on different natural features like BGP routing protocol, or like VXLAN or IPIP encapsulation protocol to build your overlay network to your cluster. And in our setup, in our Kubernetes cluster, we installed Calico Calico project using the official Elm chart. As you know, Elm is the package manager for Kubernetes that simplified the installation process and the management about our deployments. And we here we use the official Helm chart to install Calico. As you can see, we customized the installation with that Calico values.yaml. Okay. And as you can see, we are enabled, we are enabled BGP. Okay, remember that. And we are enable VXLAN as a protocol to build our over, overlay network in our cluster. Okay, and that is the pod seeder block for our internal network for the cluster. Time is for demo, just a, a quick demo about uh, the installation process uh, of Calico. As we said, we use the Helm. Here we are installed Helm using Snap. And after installing Helm, we can prepare our Calico values. That is important because we want to customize our installation. Take a look, we enable the BGP that uh, we, we use uh, in the next part. And we are using a VXLAN as a protocol of encapsulation for our overlay network, and that is the, um, the pod seeder block for the internal subnet of our cluster. Here we are adding the official repo for the Elm chart, official repo of Calico. And now we can update the repo, and we are ready, ready to go. We are ready to install Calico. So we can use the command Elm install. Okay, just we can, we can set the version that we would like to install. In my case, 3.26. And now we can install Calico passing the our values file, YAML file that will customize the installation based on our requirements. Nice. As we can see, the is deployed, okay, and uh, uh, we we ca we can go to the next step. As we uh, as we mentioned before, load, load balancer is the service that allow us to expose uh, application in in our Kubernetes cluster. As I, as you can see in this high image, we have the load balancer, okay, that we catch the incoming traffic and will reroute the traffic inside our cluster. Okay. So what about the Meta LLB? As I mentioned before, Meta LLB is a one of the tools that can enable service load balancer in Kubernetes bare metal cluster, Kubernetes vanilla cluster. And uh, um, Meta LLB in, uh, in uh, their uh, infrastructure have uh, two main components. The first one is the controller that have the rule of assigning and allocate external IP for the service load balancer. And the second rule, the second component is the speaker, one for each node deployed thanks to the, the daemon set 
okay? And the speaker is the component that have the rule to route the traffic, to balance the traffic, and the speaker can work in BGP on in layer two mode. But in one important thing, because in our setup is a little bit different. In, was, in our setup, we are leverage on Metal LB just for the controller component. We need the Metal LB just for have a component that can help to allocate and assign EP address to our service load balancer. In fact, as you can see, we deleted the daemon set of the speaker. Okay, we delete that. We don't need that. Okay, because as we can see after, will be Calico to manage the traffic. And important, we need to label all the control plane nodes. In the slide, you can see just the control plane zero one, but we need to execute this command on all three new, all three um, um, control plane nodes to exclude from uh, external load balancer. And the, the configuration for Metal LB in our setup is so simple. We just need to provide uh, as a YAML manifest, as a CRD for the, the Metal LB, the, the network that we want to dedicate for the external traffic. In my case, can be, for example, uh, cedar block slash 24, or maybe a single EP, depends on our network uh, requirements. In my case, I use it even the single EP and even the entire block. Just a quick demo to how we installed the, um, the, the Metal LB. In this time, we choose to install um, Metal LB using the official YAML manifest provided by Met Metal LB projects. And uh, we apply the manifest and uh, at this point we can, uh, the manifest will install the system pods, the controller and the speaker. But as we see in the, in the slide, we have to delete the speaker because we don't need the speaker in our setup and just we have to label Okay, we have to label all the control plane nodes to exclude from the external load balancer. Here we can pass the configuration for the IP address pool, like we have an object kind IP address pool that is a CRD provided by Metal LB uh, project. And here we are passing an entire 24 block network, okay, that is, that is, uh, will be used for, from, uh, for the external network, okay? And now, as you can see, we are kubectl, we are uh, execute this command, kubectl apply to, um, to create this object that will be read from the controller that will use this configuration to enable um, the controller. And these are the same, here we can um, enable just one AP, okay? Because I can tell to Metal LB controller, I pass a range of AP and entry block or just one single AP that you can use. So as for now, the, our infrastructure is made by a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, Calico as a CNI component, Calico node on each node of the Kubernetes cluster, and only the Metal LB controller. So the next step will be the real engine of our setup, that is the BGP configuration. For this BGP configuration, you, we need to understand what is BGP. So BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, is a protocol used to route traffic between autonomous systems. Okay, what are autonomous system? Autonomous system are a simple point that can uh, uh, route traffic, okay, to reach our destination, like internet on the worldwide network. So if we think like this, uh, our network, our infrastructure setup needs two autonomous system. One is the router itself. The second one is the Kubernetes cluster, okay. The Kubernetes cluster, so let's dip and oh, just one second in our, in our setup. Like you can see, based on the cluster, only the worker node will make a BGP session. Real, really, the Calico node on each worker node will make the BGP session. 
So our destination will be on the router, okay, will be root with a lot of path, all the Kubernetes worker node made this path. So let's start with the configuration over the router, okay, the first autonomous system. Obviously, it depends on which router you are using. We are using a BIOS router, so we use a set protocol BGP command over the router to make this uh, autonomous system connection, it's called a peer between autonomous system. And then, like you can see, all the IP address of uh, Kubernetes worker node are uh, attached to the same remote autonomous system. The real engine for this configuration is uh, the configuration of Calico, okay, the second autonomous system of our setup. Calico enables different resource API for our Kubernetes cluster to manage and configure BGP. We, were, we are using only three API, three API, so BGP configuration is the first, BGP filter is the second one, BGP peer is the third one. What is BGP configuration? BGP configuration as API in Kubernetes for Calico declared the autonomous system number of the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, it also helps uh, to, the, to declare which seed or block we need to advertise to the router. Like you can see, there are a lot of parameters in this BGP configuration. We are showing you only service external IP and service load balancer IP. What is the difference between these two? The service load balancer IP read from the parameter status load balancer IP. So it's the IP assigned by the EPP pool. Uh, service external IP can share also single IP. This is the reason why we have uh, used two different EP pool in MetalLDB. Because in this case, with a subnet mask slash 32, we can share a single IP. Why? When you, when you use a setup made by Calico and MetalLDB, you can't declare uh, with service discovery, you, we can, you can't declare a single IP without using a slash 34 in the BGP configuration. So when you declare a slash 24, for example, and you create a single IP for the external load balancer, so external IP for the load balancer, you will not get a single root on the router, but you will get the full subnet on the router because in the BGP configuration, you have specified a slash 24. For this reason, we have chose to show also the service external IP that can uh, um, can advertise as slash 32, okay? So you can have a single IP. For example, if you use Ingress, Ingress controller, you will get uh, the same IP for uh, the next uh, few years for the service load balancer for the external, for the Ingress, Nginx Ingress, Contour, and so on. So you need to advertise the single IP to get a single route, okay? Over the, obviously, autonomous system remote of your setup. But you need to understand that uh, Calico, with BGP enabled, has also the pod seeder. Okay, so if you don't use filter on your configuration, Calico will share and will advertise also the BGP, the CNI of pod subnet on your cluster. How? It will share each micro subnet for each worker node, because you know Calico can split the full pod subnet in each node. So be, if, you want to, if you don't want to use this, to have this, you need to use filter. Like you can see, we have made a reject there that can uh, uh, obviously reject all the pod subnet. The last configuration, the last API we use is a BGP peer configuration. It's a BGP peer API that can connect the communication with the remote autonomous system, in this case, Virus router, okay. Like you can see, we have used the autonomous system number, 64,513 for the Kubernetes cluster, 64,512 for the router virus. So going on, on the next slide, we, you will see our configuration. I've also explained this step. So you will see this made in the router and Kubernetes cluster, and you will see the difference between the root propagation. 
this is uh, the I've explained this because it's uh, outside of our presentation. So, like you can see, this is the command for the uh, BGP configuration on virus router. Okay, you declare the autonomous system of the router, the worker, and the autonomous system of the Kubernetes cluster. Then next on, we repeat this for each worker. Then I will show you, let me move here. Okay, like you can see, we are repeating this for each worker node under the same autonomous system. Why? Because I have said before, in our infrastructure, we have only two autonomous systems. The first one is the router. The second one are all the free worker nodes. So all the free worker nodes are the same autonomous system inside our configuration. This needs to be clear. So now I'm saving the configuration. Then I will show you how the how the configuration can show for this BGP protocol all the free path. So worker one, worker two, worker three. Let's move on on this. Okay, as you can see, all free neighbor for our configuration. The last thing I want you to show here is when I show the route here, let me stop one second. Like you can see on the router itself, there are no BGP route. If you read this, uh, this output, the B declare a BGP route. There are no root now, because we need to configure the cluster of Kubernetes, so the Calico site, to make it uh, advertise. So let's move on. Now, okay. The first one is the BGP configuration. Obviously, if you start with a clear cluster, you don't have this kind of, uh, of API object inside the cluster created. So you will start creating it. Like you can see, it's the same that you have seen in the slide. So the same parameter, two EP pool assigned also to Metal LB, 64,513, it's the cluster autonomous system. Then going on, it's the BGP filter, obviously, where we declare, obviously there is no one in the cluster. Okay, we create it. Where we reject all the pod subnet, it's a simple post-subnet post declared in Calico before. Then moving on, the third component will be the BGP peer. Let's look at this. Obviously, no BGP peer configured in a clear cluster. Yes. As you can see, Calico has a CLI for this, uh, for this kind of things. In fact, uh, in, in state of the fact, sorry for the Italian word, state of the fact, uh, you can say Calico, you can read Calico CTL. Okay, there. There's a CLI dedicated for the, do this kind of configuration. The same as kubectl apply, the same. Okay, now, all three things are configured. Like you can see, I get, do a get for all, things, all the free API. Yeah, and next we will move to the router and let's see how in the same output, the same command, we get both the root. Let's look at this. Yes, this was the previous one. Okay, here. Yeah, just one moment, it's not placed up. Yeah. Like you can see, uh, as for now, we have two B root declared. The, both the seeder we declared in B, the BGP configuration, okay? And for each of these root, we have uh, the three path, worker one, worker two, worker three. So the three worker node of our Kubernetes cluster. So as for now, the configuration is made like this. So we added the two configuration. We have a BGP session between Kubernetes cluster and router. The next step will be, let's try to deploy a new application, create a Kubernetes cluster. You, we will use the single IP, so uh, slash 32 subnet mask for the EP pool. And then we will try with a new VM to contact this EP address. For in this, in this slide, it's important to know that the, everything is connected to a different subnet. Okay. The router has two 
uh, Ethernet interface, okay, like you can see, one is on the node side, so 10, 10, 10, uh, and so on, 10, 10, 10, 0. The other one is uh, a, a new network, okay? We can see it's a different network that uh, where is the client VM, for example, and so on. Uh, a good point to know that uh, the Kubernetes uh, service external IP is taken from a new network, so a third one, so rooted network, okay? Uh, another one, let me add something so you can see it on the screen uh, next to the video. A client VM, when he made a request, he needs to be configured with the, the router as gateway, okay? If you pass the router as a gateway, you will see all the route propagated to the router. So let's see that. Let's try to deploy. Okay, let's start it. Obviously, in Kubernetes, you start with a new, brand new namespace, okay? Next to the deploy of the application, we will use a simple front end, okay, a custom UMI, okay, that serve also parameter about the client who is serving the request. Let's let's look at this. Yeah. I'm skipping all the commands so you can see a full command directly. A new deploy, okay, single uh, pod, we don't mind it. So with a front end, simple front end. Uh, and next, we will create the service load balancer. Yeah, obviously the namespace. So a new brand new deploy. Okay. Okay, like you can see, all the chain is completed. So deploy, replica set, and pod, and so on. So let's try to expose this one with a service. Let me add the command directly. Okay. In this case, okay, we are creating directly a service for the deployment. We can do it also with the manifest YAML. Okay. Uh, we need to pass two parameters up until now type load balancer port 80, for port for the application and load balancer also. Yeah. Next step, when we try to get a service and get a result of this operation, you will see that uh, the new, the brand new service has an EP taken from the EP pool of MetaLLB. Okay, so obviously namespace is missing here. Yeah. This one. Okay. As you can see, we, he has taken an EP from the EP pool of slash 32. Okay, but you can customize it because MetaLLB grant you a brand new uh, uh, annotation to select which EP pool you want to use. Okay, so you can create a different EP pool and choose from which EP pool you want the EP address, the external IP. This is the annotation. I'll show you that. Yeah. This one, a few seconds. Okay, as you can see, if you take the load balancer, you can use this annotation directly or in the manifest, YAML, what you want, to select one of the EP pool. In our configuration, one is default, the other one is single IP. So as for now, let me come back because it's going over on, on its own. Yeah. Okay. Now, next step will be I will take a new machine, this one, and try typing in it uh, the external IP. Okay. So 10, 11, 145, 0. As you can see from the client VM, so I have a brand new virtual machine on the other network. I can connect to the application. In this, in this output, you can see the name of the pod, but I will do the same command from a CLI to let you know which IP is replying to my request. 
Let me show you just one second. Yeah, this one. Yeah. As you can see, inside all the parameters it, get, it got, is the name of the pod, the IP address of the service load balancer on the request, and the, on the last part of this output, the worker who is replying to my request. So the worker, uh, the worker one, I think is that one, yeah, 10, 10, 11 is the worker one, is replying to my request. And obviously in the first part, IP, you can see the IP of the pod itself. So all the chain, the worker node, the service load balancer, and then the pod, all free EP, obviously. So as you can understand, BGP, this is only a small configuration, a small setup in BGP. You can have multiple, mul multiple uh, autonomous systems with multiple BGP peer configured, with multiple BGP filter, okay? And you can create a brand new brain network, as you can understand, to share and advertise all the EP address. So BGP obviously is uh, so wide to understand. Okay, so to talk about, it's not a 30 minute talk. But as for now, we have done a full architecture. Okay, the client VM request for the router as a gateway and then connect to the application. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, this little talk. Obviously, it's, uh, it's our first time, so <laughs> I need to, to, to share that I, I, I was a little bit anxious before. Oh, obviously, it's not my first languages. You can understand also that. So it's pretty difficult another time. But I think, uh, I hope you enjoyed it also. I enjoyed it. I will try again to uh, better improve my uh, all everything. But if you liked it, I will be glad to, to understand each question and reply to that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. How would you recommend automating? Sorry, can you? Yeah. How would you recommend automating the BGP peering? Um, is that something that's built into Calico as well? I mean, traditionally you would do it with infrastructure as code, but okay. like, what, what would you recommend for a deployment? You, uh, you are asking that you do infrastructure as code, so you are asking how to automate the peer between autonomous system with Calico? Yes, between the router and Calico. Okay. Uh, I think uh, if you if you look at a production environment, okay, you will have uh, all single IP, okay? It's not so, with MetaLLB and Calico, it's not wise uh, to use uh, um, more than 32 subnet mask, okay? Because you will have a single root. So I think you can uh, create all BGP configuration. You can have different one, because uh, we have uh, created the default one, but you can create different one. And then it's a simple, like you can see, it's a, an apply, okay? So uh, it's a manifest to create, customize the manifest. You can use different tool, for example, customize it uh, itself of Kubernetes. And then you can try, uh, automate, uh, try automate this kind of process uh, with, uh, with whichever tool you want. But it would need to be automated outside of the deployment you've described is, is what it is. So, sir, can you can you? It, it would need to be automated outside of the deployment that you described. Okay, you are saying you want to automate inside the deployment itself. I was just wondering if there is a solution. For that. I think it's a. Uh, I think that the BGP configuration is an administrator task. Okay, you need to take a step back. Okay, so the administrator itself needs to configure all the infrastructure. Okay, and then the, I think the developer will. Uh, or the operator, whichever you want, can do the next step in the pre application and will use the EP pool of MetaLLB you, the administrator, configure it. Okay, and this is a separate question, but does uh, Calico support BFD? Um, yeah, Cali uh, only Calico Enterprise support um, bidirectional uh, uh, support, the uh, failure detection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, if you use Project Calico in Calico community, uh, yeah, probably you can have a slow failover based on the timeout. You can adjust the, the timeout, can be tricky, I know, uh, but uh, if you to switch to Calico Enterprise, you can have this kind of feature. 
Okay. Thank you for your help and fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you familiar with uh, BGP Anycast? Do you know that term? BGP? Sorry? Anycast. This, yeah. Anycast. Okay, this okay. Is very, it, it's reminiscent of BGP Anycast. And uh, with Anycast, they, they, uh, it's, you could use UDP-based traffic or application, but I saw that you did TCP. Uh, yeah. How does it not break that the three-way handshake, like the TCP three-way handshake? Okay. You, you can understand that it's a, a, a lot tricky in this case, but you can uh, also inspect better configuration for the BGP uh, API resource, okay? Uh, I'm sure you can find uh, some section customize, uh, that you can customize to, to, to make this uh, configuration, okay? okay. It's a, a lot more bigger. Got it. And then when you did the curl, I noticed that it was node one that responded. If you, if you repeated the curl, will it always be node one or would it be randomly? Sorry, sir. Three? I don't understand a lot. When you did the curl command, you did a curl to figure out which node responded? It was node one. If you okay. ran, if you ran it again, it would always be node one. It would give you node okay. two, it's node a, three. It's a simple. You can add a simple equal cost multipath in this configuration, so you. you will have a different worker responding you. for your. Uh, sorry. It's 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 by preference. Is that how you did it? Uh, no, it's a it's a simple next step on the router. Okay, equal cost multipath. You will add on the router that okay. as the root itself. So okay. you can add the configuration there. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, can you, you can you approach the microphone? Yeah, yeah so sure. What, what happens if you lose the pod running the controller? Uh, the pod? Yeah, you, you run Which the one, the Calico node or? The, the Metal LED controller. Okay. <laughs> ah, you, you, need, you need to understand that Metal LED is a young project. Okay, so it's a beta project also. So in a production environment, it's a, a little bit tricky. Okay, so, but... Uh, Obviously, it comes uh, with, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's not a problem because uh, when uh, you, the controller of Metal AB gives you like an EPAM, gives you uh, a single AP, then ends its work. Okay, so if you lost a Metal AB controller, you don't lose the external AP. Okay, this is important. Because the BGP session is maintained by Calico node itself. Then uh, also, the metal LB controller is under deployment. So if uh, the pods go down, okay. you will have a new pod, obviously. So. And uh, the another question is, why yeah? not to run the, con the metal LB controller in the controller nodes of the, the Kubernetes? No, metal LB controller is a, a normal pod. It's a, by default, it's not privileged pod. So it doesn't go on uh, uh, Kubernetes control plane, but it's allocated on a simple node, a workload okay. node. So, if, if in fact, when you deploy it, 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 it can go on uh, uh, one of the worker, okay? But you can obviously customize it with a node selector, whichever you want, and you can uh, grant privilege to the Kubernetes, to the Metal LB controller, okay? Cool. okay? But the, by default, it's not like this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay, absolutely, yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.